Hello guys, so I wanted to update you on my reading. It is now Thursday. I did end up finishing A Court of Mist and Fury the other night. I adore this series. This book is just everything. Love the world so much. I am never bored when I'm reading that book. Feyre and Rhysand, I love them. The way that he treats Feyre and then also like the tidbits of Nesta and Cassian that we get are just oh my god so good. I still say Silver Flames is my favorite though so yeah if you haven't read the Avatar series I urge you to do so. I finished that on May 30 like the last day of May and yesterday was June 1st so a new month. It's also Pride month. It's also my birthday month. I kind of treat June as like I'm pretty much only going to be reading books that I think are going to be five stars for me. It's the month I was born and I just don't want to be reading mediocre books. So I started my month off with Wall of Winnipeg and Me. This book I have put off for a really long time. One, because it was almost like I knew I was going to obsess over it. Two, because I was like, what if I don't obsess over it and I'm disappointed? I finally was like, we're gonna read this. I started it last night. Look at this. Do you see these annotations? Excuse me. This book is amazing. If you know anything about Mariana Spada, you know that she's slow burn. Aiden and Vanessa are everything. They remind me so much of me and my husband. I'm just like floored with how much Vanessa reminds me of myself and how much Aiden reminds me of my husband. I just, I'm just so obsessed with them. They're so relatable. Like the way that they fight is very relatable. I got to a certain part last night where this is the page, the last like page that I read. And I was just like, I need to put this down now or I'm going to literally finish this thing in one day and I don't want to do that. So this is my bookmark that I'm using. I'm obsessed with it. Um, on the back, it has a quote. I don't want to read the quote yet because I don't think I've gotten there in the book, but it starts off with like football and art, like anything that anyone in the world has ever wanted. Love was a dream. And then it continues on, but oh my God, I'm living for this book. I'm so glad I decided to pick it up. I'm so glad I decided to wait for June to read it. I just want this month to be filled with a lot of five star books. That's my goal. We're starting off strong. I even made my own legend for this book, which I don't typically do. I normally um, just go by my normal legend. And I need to go to work now. Oh. It is 8.20 in the morning. That's why my voice is raspy. So anyway, talk to you guys soon.
Hello. So um, it is now Saturday. As you saw, I you know was doing chores this morning, and I picked up Wall of Winnipeg again. I didn't read it all yesterday, um, and I didn't read it all on Thursday after work. So this is the first time I'm picking it back up since Wednesday night. And oh my god, I just I love this book so much. It's just, it's so comforting, it's so good. Sorry if you can hear the washer machine. Today, um, Jake is at his school taking a test and then once he comes back, I'm gonna see if he wants to go get ramen after his test, hopefully he passes. <laughs> and then I'll probably come home and I'll read some more. And then tonight I have a live show for something wilder for the uh, Sugar and Spice book club. But I'm hoping to get through a lot of this book today. Um, I am a little bit more than halfway through. And honestly, like if I could finish it tonight, like that would be great. We'll see how the day goes. But oh my God, I just love Aiden so much. And I really love Vanessa too. Like I just, I love them. Oh my God, my dogs look so cute. Um, the way that they're sleeping right now, I'll have to show you. That's my plan. I will update you guys later. It's going so well. Finally back home with my book. I'm just gonna sit here and read with my puppies in my lap and drink our butter pecan iced coffee. 
Y'all, the butter pecan iced coffee with a shot of espresso added with oat milk. It kind of tastes like they put cow's milk. It's suspicious. I don't know. It's still really good. I'll know soon enough because it'll upset my stomach. <laughs> so we're just gonna sit here and cuddle and read Wall of Winnipeg and just relax for the rest of the day. That's what the weekends are for, so yeah. Okay, it is now Sunday and I'm going to finish this book. I just wanted to say that I see myself in Vanessa so much, it's literally insane. But also the friendship dynamic between Diana and Vanessa is everything. I love Diana so much. Um, the cameo, like, cause she's in Wait For It. I love how Mariana's books are like kind of all interconnected in some way, but not like, you don't have to read them in a certain order. They're just kind of interconnected and like they have certain characters that are in, you know, books and stuff that interconnect, but um, I love their friendship. It's such a healthy friendship and I just, I love to see that. Last night I ended up not reading. Um, after the live show, I ended up finishing the Madoku anime. Y'all, that anime was so dark. Like I was not prepared for how dark that shit got. It was so sad. <laughs> I was like crying at the end. Sorry, I had to get up and turn on the light. Um, So I really liked how the contrast between like how cute the characters were and how dark the show got. I just thought that was really good. There was no romance, but I still loved it. So highly recommend. I'll probably rewatch it for sure. Like definitely. But yeah, so yesterday I, I didn't read that much. I only read like 150 pages total. And normally I read way more than that on the weekends. I don't know. So today I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to start another book. I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll see which one that ends up being. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to relax today and read. It's going to be great. Literally crying right now. I'm on page 524. And Aiden is talking about like his circumstance and like his, you know, family stuff. It is so relatable, like literally to the T. Like him saying he hasn't seen his parents since his grandfather's funeral 12 years ago. Literally same, same exact thing for me. And this quote here, let me just read it to you. He says, I see now that they were both so unhappy with each other that they could never be happy with me no matter what I did. It makes it a lot easier to go on with my life. The best thing they ever did was relinquish their rights and take me to my grandparents. I didn't do anything to them and I'm better off with the way things turned out than I would have been otherwise. I wasn't about to waste my life away upset because I was raised by people who couldn't commit to anything in their lives. All they did was show me the kind of person I didn't want to be. The woman was too stunned to speak. That quote is amazing. Okay, so I'm on page 604. And I just realized the whole time I've been reading this book, I haven't even been thinking about like, oh, when are they finally going to get together? Until now. It's starting to get a little bit spicy. And I'm like, oh yeah. They haven't even like gotten together yet. But I'm so invested in them. I haven't even thought about, thought about it. Just because they feel like... I don't know. Like the tension is there, you know? So I don't know. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my God. I just finished this. This is a six star book. This was a six star prediction. And I am just so, my expectations were far exceeded. Absolute perfection. just so speechless oh my god that epilogue was so good 
leading up to the epilogue, wow. Wow. Definitely my new favorite Mariana Zapata. It takes the cake over culty, over all roads lead here. I am just so thrilled with this book and I just want to reread it. The Grumpy Sunshine was so good, but like their relationship development, I'm just like in awe of it. And then when they finally got together, I think it was like page 650, literally. Let me gather myself. The way that he was supporting her throughout everything. Truly a dream man. Besides the fact that like I related to them a lot when it comes to like family dynamic stuff, besides all of that, their relationship in and of itself was just like amazing. Five stars, beautiful, never been done before. The cameos, oh my God. The fact that like she is, you know, a graphic designer and she has all of these like side gigs that she does. And one of them is like, she'll draw tattoos for people. And if you've read Under Lock, Dex Lock is a tattoo artist. And so he was, you know, mentioned at the end of the book, she like draws, you know, tattoos for him sometimes. And I'm just like, Mariana, Mariana Zapata, oh my God. Wow. Anyway, I'm like rambling here. I don't know what I'm gonna read next. This was incredible. I'm just blown away. I'll show you guys some of my annotations and then I'll pick out my next read. standing here staring at my shelves and okay so a few five star predictions because that's my goal this month is to just read five star predictions all month i really want to read one last stop but i'm afraid it's not a five star prediction because it's just got such mixed reviews i also want to read i kiss shower wheeler okay listen let me just do five star predictions so pack up the moon that's one. Um, Gunkle, and this is also queer. So this is a five-star prediction. Shift by Angie Hawkman. The Charm Offensive is also. Oh, guys. The Charm Offensive is five-star prediction. Boyfriend material. Ooh, maybe I should do that one. Um, oh, the Kiss Quotient also five-star prediction. I also really want to read People We Meet on Vacation and Beach Read, but neither of them are five-star predictions. I feel like one of them might be. I just don't know which one because I've heard you either love one and hate the other. So I don't want to be hating any books this month. Like I just don't want to. The Roughest Draft, mm, that's like a four and a half star prediction. Uh, Delilah Green, that might be a five-star prediction, actually. Okay, and then I still need to read Twisted Hate, so maybe I should read this. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm gonna choose one of these. I'm really conflicted, if you can't tell. Okay, but wait. Um, I still need to read <laughs> The Bad Reputation, so maybe I should do that. This is supposed to be about a wife who apparently has a terminal illness or something and she leaves letters to her husband. So it's supposed to be really sad. Hopefully it's five star read. Five minutes later. Okay. Don't cancel me, but um, I'm on chapter eight. I'm 60 pages in. And I'm falling asleep. It is sad as hell. Don't get me wrong, like it is really sad, but I'm also realizing like it's a little bit repetitive. I mean, I'm only 60 pages in and I'm kind of like, this is not the vibe. <laughs> it's definitely like, P.S. I love you. I was liking it like in the first 30-ish pages because I was like, oh, it's gonna like deal with like grief but I don't know. 
I'm not vibing with it. So I might have this book. I'm not gonna say like I'm DNFing it like for sure. I think I'm just gonna shelf it and like pick it up later. I don't know, I just don't wanna fall asleep right now. So I'm gonna pick up something else. One minute later. And I put on a hoodie and I put down, pack up the moon. I'm gonna read, I wanna eat your pancreas. <laughs> this is a manga. It's about this boy who has like a pancreas disease of some kind. Um, that's really all I know about it. I saw this at Barnes & Noble a couple of months ago and I was like, that's funny, like the title or whatever. And I like made fun of it inside of my head. But then a couple weeks ago, um, I saw it again and I was like, oh, it's this again. So then I picked it up and like read the back and I was like, you know what? This seems pretty cute. I don't know. I am just a couple pages into it and I've realized I misread the back of it. It's the girl who's dying, not the guy. So just wanted to clarify that. I think it's ironic, but like, cause I had this sitting in front of me on my uh, coffee table as like a TBR kind of thing. And yeah, it's similar to Pack Up the Moon in the sense that like terminal, you know, stuff's going on. So I don't know what it is with me and picking up these kinds of books but I'm a cancer so maybe like the cancer in me is just like dying to cry I don't know that's apparently what we're going for so <laughs> okay I came into the other room because Jake's watching a movie right now but oh my god so I am like mm, probably a third of the way in this is so cute so it's grumpy sunshine and they're like kids it's so cute right now they're kind of like checking off things that she wants to do before she dies and they're at this like random hotel and there's only one bed which is cute but it's like super innocent and they're playing truth or dare and like getting to know each other it's like so adorable i'm like i love it so far so yeah this is going really great <laughs> okay just finished this Wow, this was really good. Oh my god. There was a little plot twist in there. This was really sad. I'm just gonna like go eat a bunch of ice cream now because I'm like... <laughs> oh, I did tab one little moment right there. I wanted to mention that like there were some scenes where like she was taking care of him. <laughs> And then he was taking care of her. Maybe this is a five star. I wish it was longer though. <laughs> like, I mean, it was pretty long. It was like 400 pages. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna read next. It's like six o'clock on Sunday night. So like I have some time. I could watch, you know, an anime or something where I could start another book. Suzushima Trading Company deals primarily in the importing of tableware. They currently have the top market share in the country. Wow. Uh, I get the feeling you and that guy are kind of close. Now, if you please excuse me, take care. Patty time! Ah! Okay, so I just got this package. This thing that I ordered. I'll show you guys what it is. It is called a... Did you open this? Hmm. That's sketchy. It's called a moon pal. Okay. And it's like this, kind of like a stuffed animal, but not really. Well, it is, but. It's like a weighted stuffed animal. You put on your chest and it's supposed to feel like a hug. Apparently these can help with anxiety and like nightmares because I've been having nightmares lately. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see if it like helps. If not, then I'll probably just return it. But they're like these, oh, it came with a little book. So I got this ad on Instagram for this and I was like, what is this? So then I looked into it and I went down a rabbit hole. Okay, so this little book thing, this is so cute. That's what it comes with. But basically it's like pretty heavy. It's just like a weighted stuffed animal. And 
I probably look like a crazy person, but I'm telling you, when you're having like nightmares in the middle of the night, they just feel so real. Like if you wake up, you know, and they just feel so real. And like every time I have a nightmare, I just like want to wake up Jake, but like I don't do it because I don't know, whatever. You take it and you like put it, put it on your chest like this. It's supposed to feel like a hug. It really does feel like a hug. <laughs> it's like kind of heavy. It feels like someone's like has their arms on my shoulders. Um, I know it looks ridiculous, but like, I don't really care. I'll probably just like put it on my chest like at night or whatever. But look how cute it is. <laughs> oh my God, it's so cute. This one is called Milo and they each have like little descriptions and stuff. Like there's a blue one called Bo a purple one, a green one, and an orange one. This is so random. Even the legs are like weighted. So yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna try it out. It was kind of expensive. So like if it doesn't do anything for me, then I'm gonna have to return this because, you know. Okay, so this is what it looks like whenever it's on your back. It's so cute, but it actually feels so good. Like, I don't know. I can't really describe what it feels like. It just feels like someone's like hugging me. I don't know. It feels really good. It's like relaxing. This is not sponsored. Like I bought this with my own money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why are you not moving? <laughs> Hello, so I have some book mail, but before I open that, I wanted to update you guys on my reading. So I read Evermore Academy. I really like this. Who am I picking up a fantasy and the first time in a really long time besides like House of Sky and Breath, but this is like one of the first fantasies that I picked up in such a long time and I loved it. Honestly, this was a cover buy because it's purple and I love purple. But another reason I got it is because it's called Evermore Academy and I love books that are set in schools. I was really, really skeptical of this. So I didn't even like annotate because I was like, if I don't like it, then I'm gonna wanna get rid of the book. I started annotating towards the end of it because I was like, okay, no. If you're a fan of Zodiac Academy, read this. It has like a human world and then the, the which the human world is in Texas, okay. So, and it's very like a urban fantasy, but not, no, it's like a modern fantasy. The Fey realm is also very modern. Like they talk about using AirPods and MacBooks and it mentions Ikea and Target and things like that. So it's very modern, but it was so good. Oh my God, I loved this. It really gave me like Cruel Prince vibes. I couldn't put it down, like it's just so good. Um, I did tab some, you can't really see because the tabs are so light. I really enjoyed this. I just had a really good time with it. If I'm rating it on an entertainment level, probably four and a half or five. There were some things towards the end that I was like rolling my eyes about because I was like, Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I was entertained the entire time. I definitely want to read the next one because there's three in the series. This one's winter. I think the next one is spring and then the third one is summer. It honestly was giving me like, if Barbie were to go into the Fae world, that's what it was giving me. <laughs> it felt like a Barbie fan fiction or something. Okay, next let's open up the mail that I have. It's not actually book mail, but it's like bookish mail. So, 
Hunt Athelar plushie from Fay Crate. Oh my god. Look at this. I need to reorganize my Sarah J. Mass shelf so I can fit him because this is so fucking cute. I think my friend Taylor posted about it and then I was like, oh, add to cart. <laughs> oh, also, I also started Wudakoi, the second volume. All time favorite anime. It's so comforting, it's got no plot. It's all like cute banter, but it's super relatable because the characters are older. I just identify with them a lot because they're all like very nerdy and into their hobbies. And then we have this. Oh, this is also from Fake Crate, so I know what this is. Mm -hmm. Hold on, <laughs> like it looks a little weird. I think it's a protective layer that has to be removed. Yes, that makes sense. I was like, um. So this is from uh, Red, White, and Rural Blue. Love that book a lot. I read it this year and after I read it, I just like think about it all the time. It just broke. What the heck? I think I paid $20 or something for a pin and it just freaking broke. Well, that's stupid. Okay. So like the side is broken. Anyway, I love the book. I know that there is going to be a movie coming out and I'm not really a fan of the cast. I just think that they look too old for Henry and Alex. That was Amazon's choice, I assume. <laughs> and then we have this package. So I don't remember what this is. Oh. I think I remember what this is. Wait, what? Did I order this? I don't remember. <laughs> this is so cute. Okay, this is so cute. A little Sailor Moon bookmark. Oh my God. This is so cute. So these are my Fruits Basket bookmarks. Oh my God, look at Keo. Look how grumpy he is. <laughs> That's Keo. So this one I just remembered is actually book mail. These are books that I bought secondhand for my friend Jasmine. If I can open it. Oh my gosh, she really closed this. Jasmine was cleaning out her bookshelves and was selling some books and I bought some. And I got Room Hate by Penelope Ward. I've heard this book is really good, but I don't really know anything else about it other than that, like, they're roommates. So let me know if you've read this because this looks good. It smells really good too. It smells brand new. And then I got Mr. Fixer Upper <laughs> by Lucy Score. It smells so good. It smells brand new. The cover is a little ridiculous, but like, I'm not mad about it. Um, I have read one of Lucy Score's books before and I really liked it. Things We Never Got Over. And then, oh, she gives stickers. And then I got King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. I didn't have any plans on reading this book. I had no plans whatsoever. I've seen some mixed reviews, but I wasn't gonna like buy it. I wasn't gonna spend you know my own money on it but jasmine was you know giving it away so i was like um i'll take it it's only like 360 pages so let me know if you've read this this is a vampire fantasy romance and then the last thing that i already opened but i just wanted to show you guys i got some new uh highlighters i go through highlighters so quickly because i just highlight a lot so i already needed some new ones and i got some more so yeah 